Before this um, Candace Ben implosion a month ago, two months ago, it was Ben versus Tucker. And they were going back and forth. And our friend Dave Rubin was trying to moderate uh, a conversation. Shout out to Dave. Um, now it's Ben Candace. But you, you said earlier you don't like to see conservatives I hate it. attacking each it other. It breaks my Where heart. Where do you stand on it Tucker my- and Ben and these types of conversations? I haven't followed Tucker's that. Tucker's your guy, right? Yeah, I love Tucker. I haven't followed that beef either as much. It's hard to get in the weeds when it comes to this stuff. I like making the left fight each other. I don't like when we fight each other. I like us yeah. unified. Although... It's healthy when we fight. I don't know if it's a good look. Um, You know, they are totally motivated, the left. They are 100% a mob. When they're unified and they stay on message, they just steamroll and anything goes. Hmm. And the ends justify the means. If the Republican movement or the conservative movement is constantly fighting over each other, which is fine, which is healthy in a primary if you're not going to monetize it, what are we doing here? I don't know. I, I, I like aiming. I like aiming the weapons at the other side, theoretically, not literally. Yeah, yeah. But I do. I do. We got a big election coming up, so this is fun. I like watching. It's entertaining. Um, I, I just. I just feel like I'd like to train our focus in other places. Well, you know, and wish, this is wish, a personal beat. This is personal. I get. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, because Tucker is starting his new company, TCN, right? It's, right? it's, it's a bit they're Wire, jockeying for publisher. market share. Exactly. Right. So, um, speaking of infighting, you know, you're Fox News. You know what's going on around the country. Uh, the establishment, MAGA, rhinos. Ma- like, where where do you see this infighting? You see Marjorie Taylor Greene, Mike Johnson. You know, the House, the Speaker, Kevin McCarthy. There's going to be infighting regardless. We were at the event with Matt Gates. I don't think this is going to stop. Where do you, where do you, as someone who has very good perspective, where do you see the establishment, Republican Party, the Reagan, you know, McConnell side of things versus the new king in town, Trump? They don't have the margins in the House to be fighting like they're fighting. Mm-hmm. What is it? One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's a few seats. So if one guy says, Johnson, you're out, that's it. Or and, girl, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Or girl. Yeah. That you're done. And then so they have no control. And and then that's how you get all of this funding for all of these wars. And, you know, you can say what you want about Ukraine, but, you know, you're not going to get anything done. Maybe we don't want anything done. But it doesn't seem to me like the establishment is uh, feeling confident these days. It feels like the MAGA movement or the populist movement has taken full control over the party. But you still need to maintain electability and establishment candidates in Senate races, because in certain races, you might not be able to win in a statewide race with a full throated MAGA conservative. You might have to run someone a little bit more to the center. And that's something for Mitch McConnell to figure out. And that's something for the donors to figure out. But I like winning. Yeah. And I'd rather win than 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 lose uh, honorably or um, or purely. Uh, I like majorities in the House and the Senate. Mm-hmm. I like the White House. And so I want to do whatever I can to make sure we have a unified party going into this election, because if we're not unified, we're going to lose. Well, what's your solution for a unified? Because, you know, you like winning. I think the, a lot. Whole, of, I think spending's the big problem. I think mm-hmm. spending and immigration, there's a lot of knucklehead Republicans that don't care. They'll just spend the money and they'll bankrupt the country and they're OK with open borders. And that's a huge problem. But they hide. And I think there's more of them than we even realize. Really? Oh, yeah. Like big names, influential names? I think I think almost a majority of House Republicans don't care about deficits. And you would have to agree with the that. The deficits I mean, for sure. I'm, the spending I'm with, and the deficits. For, and I'm, I'm on the and deficit when they side. got a shot to build the wall yeah. under Trump, when they had majorities, they didn't build the wall. Trump had to scream bloody murder to get that funding. It was only $2 billion. Now they're throwing around $80 billion over here, $90 billion over here. I think the donor class and a lot of these corporations, they love the open border. I mean, look at these jobs reports. Sure. A lot of these jobs are migrant jobs. And they put downward pressure on wages. You bring them in. They're filling up hotels. If you're a hotel owner in Manhattan, you have fully booked rooms from now until next year. Yep. 
So it's just new customers to the corporate class. And a lot of the grassroots Republican that I know and love, uh, they don't like it. And we did the math. Pa- that. Patrick, we did the math. How much was yeah. it to build the wall? Like how Egypt has their wall? Yeah, what? Egypt did it for $450 million. We could do it here. We could do it for $5, five, billion, billion. five billion. We even said because America always pays more. Because, you know, in the military, you used to all be like, this is $20, but we pay $200 for it. We could do it for $20 billion, no problem. To like, build the like the most secure, Jesse, even yes. underground. So there's no Nothing. problem. Yeah. Freaking uh, at 20 billion at 20 billion. Yep. But you but and, and I'm but I'm, my concern with what you're saying is, Jesse, when you're saying this, are you saying big name Republicans that are that they don't care about people crossing the border? Because so the, so the number that I saw the other day on uh, China, I'm sure you've seen this number on the number of people are now that are crossing the border from China. Rob, Vinny, I think you sent me this tweet. So let me just read these numbers here. I got it somewhere here. Okay. So in 2001, okay, this is 2001. Uh, it almost needs to be in a way, Rob, that people can see it. Let me show this. Yeah, right there. 2001, we had 342 Chinese immigrants, illegal immigrants crossing the border that got arrested. Let me say that one more time. 2021, okay. <laughs> 342, 342 people the entire year. 2022, it's six X's to 1987, okay. a year later. 2023 goes to 24,125. <laughs> and 2024, just Q1, is at 22,233 in Q1. That's an increase of 6,300% in three years. Wow. Did you just do the math in your head? No, no. 6,300% in three years. Absolute insanity. So even for Republicans to be like, do you sit there and say, well, I would say uh, all the 50,000 people that came here, 100% of them are noble people. They have no bad intentions. They probably love America. Sure. Really? Well, if you know anything about China, if you're a Chinese national and you come to the United States, you're beholden to the CCP. If they tap you in California and they say you're going to go spy on that naval base, you're going to go spy on that naval base yeah. or your family back what in Beijing. What is that called? What, is, there, is, there, is there something for the... They, the Chinese government uses Chinese Americans who have immigrated here as intelligence assets. They can lean on you. And you've seen it in college campuses. You've seen it in corporate America. There's tons of espionage in corporate America. They're stealing trade secrets constantly. It's a, it's a huge threat. And I don't want to blast Republicans whole scale, but watch if Trump wins re-election. And he starts deporting. You're going to see a lot of Republicans go soft. You think so? You're going to see a lot. They get squeamish. They get confronted by Washington Post, Reuters, Associated Press, CNN reporters in the halls of Congress. Don't you think it's mean to be breaking up families? This is like the Nazism. This is uh, isn't Trump a horrible person. That's what they're going to do, and they're going to get squeamish. But I think Trump's going to come back and say, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? You know, He's going to say that, Yeah, he, but the, the, maybe not everybody in the House is going to be that strong. Well, sometimes if the, if the number one is such a big driver, the, the, a great number one driver knows how to corner and pin people into a decision. He knows how to corner you and, and, uh, uh, into a decision where if Obama has the record for the most people ever being deported by a president two terms, and it's not even close— what did they call him again? The, the, the deporter, deporter in chief. chief. The yeah. deporter uh, uh, in, chief. in chief. In chief. Yeah. If yeah. Uh, Trump's always going to go back to that, what are you talking about? Your hero, Obama. Here's what he did. What he. So, so if if Trump decides to deport, I guarantee you, no one is going to be more scared about their legacy than Obama because Trump's going to say that twenty four seven. Constantly talking about Obama is the deporter in chief. Who said the article, by the way? Was it New York Times or was it ABC? That I actually want to know who labeled that. ABC. Has who, who who labeled it? If you type in deporter in chief, go to news, go to news right there and see who who labeled. Um, there was a. It was either was it CNN it? It was or CNN. New York Times. Yeah, well, that there, did there's it. a. What context is? I ever- thought it was activists. I thought it was immigration activists. That well, ABC's right there. Uh, 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 Obama has deported more people than anybody else. I want to know who coined the phrase deport. Uh, right? the, the president of Obama has been referred to by immigration. Yeah. Immigration groups. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was yeah. his. I thought and, it was and, his. And, and, while you're looking, just guys, some questions. So they're saying 
the numbers are always going to be low. In the four years that Biden's uh, going to, uh, hopefully, God, God willing, he's done, 20 million, maybe more illegals will be in our country. Trump comes in. How do you even start a process to get rid of 20 million, which they don't have IDs, they're just floating around, nobody knows what they are. How do you even fathom starting a process like it's that? It's going to be the greatest deportation <laughs> ever in the world. Yeah. Big, beautiful wall.